Well, there you go, folks. Chris knows what he's doing. You can't get 13 and a half inches of droop in a jail. <laughs> there it is, bud. There it is. That's pretty mental. For what? We're doing multiple things in one day. We're getting the same clothes. Okay. Yeah, this is video number three. No. <laughs> so what's up, Light Bright Nation? What's up? <laughs> so Chris, we've got the stepchild over here on the forklift. We, you want to care to explain what kind of shenanigans and, and why Kevin's putting you to work doing. So Kevin decided to go longer on the bypasses. From 11 inch to 13, 13 and a quarter. Yeah, like 13 and a quarter. So now we have a ton of droop. And we're going to show you what happens when you have a ton of droop. With a five with, with, with a factory-ish five length that I'm about to change. Right, so even though I have long arms, we still have the rear track bar, and 11, maybe 12 inches is about as far as you can go. And, and we'll show you why here in a second. Yeah, so let's go ahead and lift it up, we'll show you what's up. All right, so let's show you how much this has. We've got over 40 inches that travel now at 32 PSI in here, with sway bars and everything. And now I'm gonna get under here and start showing you what's happening. The drive shaft, as he keeps going up, is going to start moving closer and closer to the gas tank. And so stop there. So we still have way more up travel and there's still more down travel here. But we can already see that the axle and everything has already moved all the way under the, the gas tank. We can keep going. Like I said, this will go 40 inches and that's only like 30 maybe off the ground. So there's an issue, and the issue is we can't use all the flex. Do you want to keep going? Do you want to show them? I mean, it's already under there. Oh, oh, I got a little bit. That, that is, is crazy. That is off the ground. Like that is super duper crazy. And of course, like this would finish out coming up if we lift it up the other side. Now this is at 30 psi. We measured this the other day. And this is over 40 inches off the ground. I don't know, stand, maybe stand next to it. Like that's, that's a good amount. So now that is 13 and a quarter. Look how much shot we have there. But here's the issue. Look, the whole diff is literally into the gas tank right now. It's way too much droop. Now you want to explain what and why that's, why that's moving so much? Well, currently we're in a factory location pickup with a track bar. And then this bar is for a stock Jeep so that it rides into here. A stock-ish Jeep. Right, that's the factory location, but factory it's, a, it's an aftermarket bracket. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring this side down to try mm. to bring this more parallel at ride height, which we'll show you when we put it back on the ground. We're going to try to bring this down and out a little bit, and then we're going to try to bring this up and over because we have plenty of clearance to the frame. We already know we don't hit the frame when we articulate all the way that way. So we're going to try to make this track bar longer, more parallel, so that this arc will be over here. So it'll try to swing the drive shaft out underneath the vehicle, itself. underneath yeah. the fuel tank instead of into it. So right now with that being short and already twisted, what happens is that as, as this rotates, it literally rotates like that. Whereas if you make it super long and flat, it'll just literally dip, dip down from there to there. So that's the goal. So this guy needs to come down, down three, and four out. inches. This guy needs to come over three and up like three, four inches. Yeah, an inch or so. And then we need a new bar. <laughs> and I'm gonna make a new bar. And make a new bar. And then we'll come and flex it out again and see if, cause right now this is not wheelable. If I flex it out like that, like that's gonna just go into the gas tank and tear all kinds of stuff up. And let me show you from this side. Although it's kind of sketchy, I guess not. So you can see that guy is in there. That is that is in there. That's not possible to do. Now you could also get away if you did a triangulated four link, but you can't do that with the stock gas tank. So if you're trying to go all yeah, then you wouldn't have gas tank issues because you wouldn't be there to begin with. That's true. Oh, one other thing. Next running, upgrade. One other thing we're running into is it's got so much articulation now the tire is just jammed into that bypass. So need different offset wheels or we just go with wheel spacers which it doesn't have right now or you go 72 wide axles because right now we're still on Dynatrack 6080s but we're still 68 and a half stock width I wanted to keep it nice and and tucked so yeah is this a lot of work nah and I also want to point out one other thing that we did was we actually put half inch spacers in the rear it's sitting a little higher than in the rear than the front but that's because one we needed that extra spacer for that extra travel and before when it was all level 
when we put stuff in the back, put an ice chest, a cooler, anything like that, it would be way too low in the rear and I'd be out of shock. So we did have to put a half inch spacer in the back, but once we put anything or any one back there, it will literally just sit level, so. So I've got Bolton Trail Sport wheel spacers on the CJ7. Luckily, the CJ, the TJ buggy, the Jeep, they all run the eight lug. So I've got to jack this up one wheel at a time, pull off the one and a quarter spacers. But what's cool is if I need more, there's already half inch slip on spacers on the Jeep. So you want to run the least amount of spacer possible. At least I do. I don't want to be super, super wide. So we'll start with just the inch and a quarter bolt on. And then if it's still touching, we'll add the half inch and see if we're there. And once we get it all, we figure it all out then we'll just order the right spacers. So now that we got it in the garage and it's at ride height, you can see how this pan hard bar is not parallel to the ground. So that's what we're gonna change today. That's what we were talking about. Because it's already lifted, the pan hard bar is not square to the deck. So we are gonna move this one over and up. And we're gonna move that one, move that one down and out considerably. And we'll have a much longer bar and much better articulation. All right, we got the mount cut off, and what I did is I cut the top of this off. So I cut the top, the top three holes off, because I need to extend it up. So I added about an inch and a half-ish to it, and I made a new top. Got it all welded up there. We're gonna clean it up now, and we'll get this put back on. All right, so we got it stuffed out. Look at that. Look at that clearance clearance. She's stuffed out, it's tacked on, it's moved over three and a half inches, and it's raised one inch, about an inch and a quarter actually. So we're, we're stuffed up there, so the top panard bar is gonna come all the way up to here. Now we're gonna cut this one off, move it down and out, and make sure that the, the sway bar link will pass past it. We're gonna set her back down to ride height though. She's at full stuff right now. Full stuff, clearance. Love it. So sick. Now we're at droop. Or we're at ride height, basically. So now I just gotta cut this guy off. Grind, 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 grind. Tack, 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 tack. Grind, 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 grind. Make it vanish. Oh. Might have to take that off. But anyway, now I gotta cut that off. Factory track bar bracket is no more. It is no more. Now I just gotta make that thing fit up there. Voila, I think. See that guy way over there? That guy right here. Needs to line up with this guy. Right here. Just get a little more, more trimming to do and it should line right up with that guy right over there. Oh, that guy right over there. No, oh, that guy, that guy. Yeah, that guy. All right, we got this guy pretty massaged out. Fits right there. It's gonna clear the shock by plenty and it's gonna clear the sway bar link, which you really can't see, but it will clear that, I don't know. It will clear that sway bar link when it swings down. So we should be, should be A-OK -okay there. So we're just gonna tack that guy on and go for it. Got the frame side bracket mounted. Now we just gotta pull a measurement from this bottom hole to the top hole over there. So it looks like we're gonna be 40 and a half. So I'll make a bar eyelet to eyelet at 40 so that we have some wiggle room. And that's what we'll go cut right now. And just for reference, the new track bar is going to be three inches longer, three and a half inches longer than this one. So now we'll have a lot larger of an arc. So hopefully the drive shaft doesn't hit the gas tank. Honestly, all I have laying around the shop is inch and a half quarter wall. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, luckily I have some tube ends still and some really big hinds and some misalignment. So this is what we're gonna use today. It's perfect. Well, I just have a longer one over here, but we're gonna bury it all the way. Oop. We're gonna bury this one all the way in the pipe. So it's just extra thread. I don't know why these are so long, but this is what I have laying around. That's what we're gonna use. So 
Well, here it is. It's at 40 and a half. So we already pulled some out of it, but so she's pretty centered. I mean, that's pretty freaking flat. And it's, I think it's a hair high, so it's way flatter than it was, but it's also three inches longer. So let's see what it does now. Well, uh, Kevin wants me to put another tack on here. I gotta put another tack up there. All right, we're at full stuff. <laughs> full stuff on this side. 14 inches of droop over it's here. Not, it's not it's even not on there. Touching. And uh, we got like a quarter of an inch in here. Yeah, before this wasn't even, the shock wasn't even fully collapsed. We saw like two and a half inches. And this whole pinion was, it was touching right was here. hitting under here. So it would drop further and be over another two and a half, three inches. Yeah, it was, that was nuts. Now we're stuffed. So we don't even know <laughs> if the tire is actually going to clear still because we were already rubbing up here. But uh, we're at full stuff and we don't even hit with the drive shaft anymore. So, and even if we needed to, we could cheat the rear end to the driver that much. But I don't think we're gonna have to. It looks pretty awesome. That's what having a proper rear track bar and the proper geometry. So this is about what it was at before at ride height. Was that set up? Yeah, it was set up was it? Yeah. pretty pretty close to that. Well, we went up an inch and a half on this side and we went down. Yeah. We went down like four inches on this side and we're three inches wider. Sure. Well, success. So now I just have to tear it all apart and finish welding all this stuff up. <laughs> so put it together, test it, take it apart, weld it. Wow. <laughs> we clear everything. We're at full bump, full droop, a 40. Look at this, a 40. Completely, completely stopped. stopped. And we're not touching anything. Drive shaft. Not touching. Not touching. Not touching. This is so sick. Well, there you go, folks. Chris knows what he's doing. You can't get 13 and a half inches of droop in a jail. <laughs> there it is, bud. There it is. That's pretty mental. Now that we have all this droop, this extra droop, like 13 and some change, almost 14 inches of droop in the rear, springs start to separate at full droop. So we're gonna counteract that with one of these. A couple of months ago, we put this bar in here to strengthen up these spring pockets because they were bent up and into the floorboard and it actually ripped up in here. So we added this bar right here, it goes all the way across. So we're going to put a single limit strap in the center. We're gonna go from here to the top of this truss. And what that's going to do is at full droop, if for instance, Kevin like, you know, jumps it like he likes to do, we don't lose springs. But at full articulation, we don't lose any springs because of the angle this spring will actually suck up a little bit, so they don't want to fall out. But only at full droop on both do they want to fall out, so we're gonna limit it with a limit strap. Well, that was easy. Now we just gotta put the springs back in and we'll jack it up just so that the springs touch and then we'll pull a measurement and get a limit strap ordered. So now we'll just jack them up so that we have enough spring tension and then we'll pull a measurement and get a strap ordered. A 12 and a half inch strap, eyelet to eyelet. Get one of them ordered up. Now that it's back on the ground, we just gotta flex it out. All right, Chris, go ahead and, let's go ahead and flex her out.
Is that, is that where she's at? That's where the front tire starts to come up. That's when the front. Droop in the front. We need more droop in the front. <laughs> That's when the front tire comes up. Let's see, go a little bit, bump it. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, we need more droop in the front. Check that out. That is freaking up there. <laughs> now look at that rear track bar. Look at that. Look how flat that baby is. So the real test now is Look, that real test is where the drive shaft is at. So, let's see. Well, I can already tell you, look, that axle is not underneath the gas tank. Look at where the drive shaft's at. The drive shaft is not into the gas tank. It is sitting right in that little pocket. It is close. But if you remember, it was all the way under here. It was literally like three inches underneath. That might be exaggerated, but okay. it was pretty far underneath. <laughs> it was non-drivable. <laughs> with with this setup with the 13 and a half inches of, of of droop and all the way compression look at that look at this look at that gap that is completely perfect that's perfect bump stop touching i might be able to add a bump so we get deeper into that bump so i'll just add i'll add just one the there yeah, the just same. so it gets like deeper into there so the springs are tight the springs are, are tight in here at flex, but if I was to drop straight out with both of them, we need to limit it, right? No, when you, when you go jumping through the dunes. When I go <laughs> yeah. So let's measure this out real quick, because we need to check the flex wall. Oh, look at that, Chris, Chris appears with the, Chris appears with the tape measure. So, what, is that, what does that say? What does that, what does that say? What does that say? So that says 46. So there's, I don't, I don't know that it's really at 46 because the tire's a bit down there, but the tire's always down there. It's just the fork's a little bit more spread apart. Yeah. But we'll go with like 44, 44 and a half. We've never gone to the bottom of the tire and this is at 30 PSI. We've always just, to yeah, keep it, full. she's completely full. But let's go check out the flex wall. Cause I mean, we were, I think at 36 before at 30 PSI. Let's go see. Cause God, look at that. Guys, I forgot to tell you, my fronts are 10 inch bypasses and the rears are 12s. We removed the limiter out of the rear to get 13 and a half. The limiter's removed out of the front to get 11. So it was 11 and 11, now it's 11 and 13 and a half. But it looks like we might be able to go ahead and go with like 12, 12 and a half, yeah, maybe 13 able, here. Might be able to move this bracket down, change this eyelet, or put a one inch eyelet on there instead of this two inch and then run a longer bypass on there. Right, and get even more down travel up front as well. Okay, let's see what we got. Okay, yeah, so we were at 36 and a half inches at 30 PSI. We are now at 44 inches at 30 PSI. The that was 40, 42, at 42 and three quarter was at 10 PSI. So if we crush that tire, we could probably get another. <laughs> that sucker's gonna be up in the. That thing's gonna be up in the buggy. Yeah, if we crush that tire, we're gonna go from 44 to almost 50, probably 48, 49, somewhere in there. Yeah, and then it'll go on the buggy line. Oh, is that gonna be the buggy it's line? It's gonna be the buggy line. We're gonna make a <laughs> we'll mega strip. If you can make it in the street legal buggy class. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's crazy. So we went from 36 and a half. It said 46, but it, it the, the forks are out. But yeah, we're gonna go with about 44. Once we fix the forks, we'll get another measurement. But if we air down, and then what if we change the front shocks to 12, 13? Uh, you get another, if it'll go, you get another three inches, maybe four inches of articulation out of the front. Dude, it's, you're gonna flip it over. <laughs> no, that's the whole point. It's not going to flip gonna, over. So when this whole thing started, we foresaw the rears and the fronts being an issue. Not an issue, but me always wanting more, never having enough. So uh, these literally, these literally just showed up. They are brand new. Those are 12s to match the rear. So those are for the front. So we're going for buggy. We're going for buggy numbers. Oh, yeah. In a street driven JL that can go 90, 100 mile an hour down the highway. Dang. Let's get those on. Not now. <laughs> yeah, another. That'll be another video for sure because that's going to take some moving of the shock mounts. That's going to take maybe some movement of bump stops. I, 
Not 100% sure, but then we're gonna have to test it out at different different travels because we want to get the most out of it, but you definitely don't want to start breaking or bending steering components or it, there, there's a lot more going on up front than there is in the rear, so. The up travel's the same though, actually. The bump stop st is gonna still stop it, so it's gonna be all how much down travel can we get until stuff starts to not be happy at angles. Is that it? We just have a limit strap, don't we? Uh, that's ordered. We have to put a limit strap on it so that it doesn't fall out at full droop, so. The springs aren't tall enough at full droop on both sides, but they are tall enough when you, yeah, when you articulate, which is pretty cool. How much down travel are we getting if I was to jump it with, with the strap? 12 inches? A little more, about, about, about 12 and a half inches. About 12 and a half. It doesn't like the 13 and a half. No, it does now. not like, the, the springs just start. <laughs> the to springs just come out and they're done. All right, guys, well, thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Remember, you can find all of your Light, Light, Light Bright Nation merch and decals at lightbrightstudios.com. Chris, you killed it. Guys, we love you. We will see you on the next one. Bye, guys. Bye. Chris, you have a visitor. It's a big... What are you doing? Huh? Chilling? Oh, don't eat that. That's not good. Where, where are you going, bud? C come here. Oh, oh he just sh the porch. <laughs> oh, man. Come here, buddy. You scared the shit out of him. Gobble, gobble, buddy. Come here. Come here, buddy. Come here. No? No? All right. He's, oh. he's like, I'm going back. Apparently we weren't entertaining enough. Hello. I mean, you even got on your knees. Bye, buddy.